40% blame the president, but 48% Blame Republicans in Congress. Let's bring in our strategist now. Karen Finney is an MSNBC political analyst who is the spokesperson for the Democratic National Committee. Doug High is former communications director for the Republican National Committee. Uh, good afternoon to you both. Hey, good Craig. afternoon. There has been this perception that the president was be on the hook for the most part by himself for our economic woes. Is, is this new poll a sign of what's to come? Are Republicans in the eyes of voters now uh, in jeopardy of, of co-owning this economic mess, Karen? Absolutely. And this is consistent, again, with what we have seen uh, over the last several months, both in the market reactions and in uh, polling from, from the American people, which has said they don't like this fighting and this partisan bickering. They want to see something get done. But what they've also seen is that it has been the Republicans time and time again who have been unwilling to work with this president. I mean, I have to tell you, Craig, when I woke up this morning and, you know, Tim Pawlenty is endorsing the president and Eric Cantor is saying he's willing to work with the president. I thought I was in a parallel universe, but it's about <laughs> time, actually. Some sort of bizarre world, did you get? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, wow, we really might be able to get something done. How exciting would that be? Is, is this why, is this why we've, we've heard the tone change a tad? I mean, do you think that the Republicans, uh, Mr. Hyde, do you think the Republicans, they've seen polls like this as well? Well, certainly they've seen polls like this, but we know that we need to get the country moving in the right, right direction. So I'm very happy with the language and the tenor that Speaker Boehner and Majority Leader uh, Eric Cantor have, have taken. And to contrast, look at the language that we saw from the president uh, just last week when he spoke to Congress. It was an angry tone. It was a combative tone. He's taking it to battleground states. For him, this is about politics. Let's keep the, in mind. Was the tone no. angry? Was it he's really a, angry? The tone absolutely I, was angry. The I number of times he said, pass this bill, a bill that Valerie Jarrett admitted what? on the Rachel Maddow show after the speech hasn't even been proposed yet. It's That's Wait why it's important that Speaker Boehner and Eric Hanner have taken the tone that they have and it's a good step forward. Karen, you're making your face. Well, no, because, Doug, I mean, let's remember way back when, before the president, when he was actually in the car on the way to go meet with the Republican caucus on the House side to talk with them about health care legislation, here in the caucus meeting said, we're against it. Don't anybody be for it. Before the guy even got there to talk to him about it. So I, how you can say that it's angry of him to say, pass this bill. I think the guy was being, the president, I should say, was being very firm and, and, and sort of making the point that the time for the game is over. We've got to focus. And one of the things that I think is so powerful in what the president is doing is it's not just about politics, but it's also about, you know, let's put these guys on notice. Doug. Eric Cantor, if you're going to say, if you're going to obstruct, then I'm going to go to your district and I'm going to let your constituents know what I'm for and let you explain to them why you're not going to be for that. Doug, I want to call your attention to another poll ahead of tonight's Tea Party debate uh, down in Florida. This is a CNN poll. In this poll, as you can see, a Rick Perry, the bona fide front runner now, a 12 percentage point lead uh, over Mitt Romney, clearly outside the margin of error. At what point should the Romney folks go to DEFCON 2 or DEFCON 1? <laughs> well, maybe five alarm. You know, there are so many different warning levels that we have. What color it may be, we don't know. Uh, but certainly it's something they take seriously, and it's why tonight's debate will be particularly interesting. You'll see Mitt Romney probably engage more. And one thing that you'll hear is him say probably two or three times, hopefully not 16 times like President Obama said pass the bill. He'll say, and this is why Tim Pawlenty supports me. And you'll see cutaway shots of Tim Pawlenty. It's a good step forward for the Romney campaign, and I'm looking forward to tonight. Well, the Pawlenty endorsement matter at all. I mean, he, he under this in, uh, endorsement, talked about it uh, ad nauseum uh, down in South Carolina, and, and I would imagine there are a lot of folks down in the Palmetto State who probably don't even know who Tim Pawlenty is. Well, I well, think that's right. I, I think it's not necessary. I mean, look, it's always good to pick up endorsements. Doug knows that. It, it doesn't hurt necessarily. But I don't know that this is kind of the big endorsement that is going to make a big difference for Romney at this point. Clearly, Perry is coming on strong, and I agree with Doug. Tonight it will be interesting to watch sort of what their dynamic is and whether or not Romney is going to more directly engage him uh, on some ideas. Last question here, guys, before I let you get out of here. Social Security, it appears as if this is going to emerge as the wedge issue for GOP candidates. There's that op-ed today uh, that Rick Perry wrote about the need for reform. Uh, he didn't call it a Ponzi scheme in the op-ed. He didn't refer to it a as a lie. Is this smart politically, Doug, for Rick Perry uh, to pursue? 
Well, he needs to draw contrast with Mitt Romney, and that's how you, you move forward to win primaries, to win uh, caucuses. And so as he creates that uh, distinction, this is a great way for him to do so. Will it work? We certainly don't know, but we know that Social Security is unsustainable, and we can't continue to sustain the unsustainable. We have to find a way to keep the commitments that we've made to seniors while allowing younger voters, younger citizens, a chance to move forward. Karen, is this a smart, uh, smart distinction politically? Not necessarily, because look, the important thing is you've got to also make it clear. I mean, I agree with Doug, this is about contrast, but at the same time, Social Security is a government program that many, many, many people in this country rely on. So you've also got to show that you value the program and the ideals and the, what we're trying to do, even though you believe it needs to make change. And I think Romney has done a better job of striking that balance thus far than Perry has. All right, we love social media here during the uh, 12 o'clock hour on MSNBC. I put this question out there earlier to some folks. And this is what uh, one young lady said. She said Social Security does need some retooling, but not his extreme measures. She was talking about the uh, Perry op-ed this morning. If he delivers the message right, some will believe. So remains to be seen. You can always tweet me as well. I'm at Craig Melvin. We don't have time for you guys to throw in your Twitter handles, but next time you're on, uh, Karen and Doug, we'll let, you, uh, we'll let you mention those as well. Thanks so much for your time on this Monday. Thank you. Could be another wild ride on